and I'm in the workplace. But at this time, what we're hearing is Gen X, lazy, entitled, always on computers, listening to that grunge. It was good. I liked it. What are you hearing today? Lazy, entitled, always on their phone. No loyalty. That's what I heard. You know why we weren't loyal? Loyal? Because our parents got laid off from their jobs. That's why we weren't loyal. Yeah, but you're just like this. And I worked at the movie theater. I told you at the start I was an usher. I'm not kidding. That was the usher. Imagine that working Forrest Gump because I worked Forrest Gump. That was hell week. That was busy. There's so many gummy bears on the screen. Well, don't do that. I have to get them off with a broom handle. No ladder. You figure it out. So I'm working there, and I was not exactly the usher of the year. I was horrible. I was exactly what you thought. Whatever you're thinking of me right now, you're right. Your branding is right. I did not like, I hated my manager. I won't name her, but it was Brenda. <laughs> she was the GM of the whole theater. And I hated her because she was in a position of authority. And that was my job, was to hate that. And I'd come in and I'd punch in right on time. I wouldn't even punch in right on time. I'd punch in on time and then I'd go get ready. Yeah, I know. I was that guy. And I'd go down, I'd take a break, it was 15 minutes, maybe it's 18 minutes today, or 20, or half hour, can't remember. Anybody want to go home? Scott's already in his car, driving away. <laughs> that was it, trying to pawn off every shift I got. And then if I didn't get shifts the next week, I'd bitch about it. That was me. I couldn't care less. I worked box office, candy bar, usher. And one day into my shift, with my frickin' bow tie, and striped shirt, because we had to be clowns, I guess. And I'm behind the usher selling overpriced pop and candy and popcorn and a woman comes up and asks for a, a water cup and I'm like I'm sorry ma'am I cannot give you a water cup because these cups are inventoried if you ever worked in these places you had to count the cups back in the day to inventory stuff and I was not going to give you one of those because then my count was off and what happens if the count is off you gotta count them again and I'm not doing that because I want to go home so I could give you a Dixie cup ma'am for your water because it's policy, right? It was policy, and our job was to enforce it as a minimum wage frontline worker. And I gave her the little cup, and she lost her frickin' mind on me. I learned new words that day. She called me everything. Listen, you little son of a... effing this and this and... And I'm like, oh, it's go time. Let's do this. And I'm ready just to give right back at her. I am up on the counter, ready to, it's, it's, it's go time. And then I feel a hand on my shoulder. And it gently pulls me back. And I'm like, Jesus, is that you? <laughs> and it wasn't Jesus, it was Brenda. So, <laughs> pulls me aside and goes, Ma'am, get the hell out of here. You, nobody talks to my staff that way. You will leave now, and you are not welcome back. And I'm behind Brenda like this. <laughs> yeah, so what's up now? Huh? What's up? And she turns around, she's like, you're right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just glad you got in between us because, you know, I was getting ready to throw it. Yeah, I'm good. And I turned into the greatest usher in the history of famous players movie theaters. I was early. I picked up shifts. I washed my work socks. <laughs> Never do that. Everything. I was her best employee. I, I polished the chrome poles that hold the velvet rope. I don't know if you know anything about those poles. They don't get polished. I polished them. I bought silver polish. And I realized they're not, they're made out of silver. They're not made out of silver. And that would, that ruins a pole. So anyway, and when she left, because I, uh, what, because I left, I got fired for theft and I, um, <laughs> I didn't get back. <laughs> well, I quit when I, was, when I went to college. Uh, I, I, she was there my last day. And she says, I could not stand you when you started. 
And I'm like, I know. <laughs> She's like, you're the best usher I've ever had. And I'm like, well, it doesn't take much talent. You just point to a seat. But yeah, thank you. I, I, was, I, was, I gave her a hug. And I'm like, I, you know why I did all that stuff? She stood up for me. And if you're in that mindset, when you're especially in, in adolescence or teenage years or 18, even 20, even when you're 40, when you have somebody's back, especially in the workplace, you build loyalty. Because we're told to enforce these policies. And what I was used to was a boss or a manager or somebody coming by and then jumping over my head and saying, don't worry about it, just give them the cup. And you'd be like, what? what's the point? We're so used to that stuff. And she changed it. And I bet any of your franchisees, any of you working with people who are a great amount younger than you especially, when you have their back, they will have yours for as long as you want. Because it's such a rare thing. It's such a rare thing. In the day and age of politics and protecting your own backside, doing all this, it it affects it. You want to know how to work well with millennials? Learn how to work well with people. 